All right, it's time to talk to you guys about acid rain today. Acid rain is an IB concept. We were talking the last day about how nitrogens and sulfurs become oxides. Now, the next step of that is acid rain. Acid rain is also known as acid deposition. I'm going to just use acid rain. It's faster to say. Okay. What's the pH of normal, normal rainwater? Does anybody know? The pH of normal rainwater is like 5.6 to 6. It's acidic. So all rain is acid rain by that definition. It's acidic. Well, the reason why 5.6 to 6 is the pH of rain is that carbon dioxide in the atmosphere reacts with water in the atmosphere to make a very weak acid called carbonic acid. So that's why normal rain is acidic. You, if you have pH paper and you that made people, there's like a big kerfuffle when normal people get pH paper and they test rain and they're like, oh my God, the rain is acidic. It is acidic. However, if you get below 5.6, that is unnatural acid rain. An acid rain, unnatural acid rain, and you can have naturally occurring acid rain from volcanic eruptions, but most acid rain around cities and urban centers comes from sulfur and nitrogen. Okay, so let's tell, I'll tell you a little story about sulfur. Now, we are going to start with sulfur dioxide, okay? So we are going to start with sulfur dioxide. We already talked about how sulfur, when burnt, becomes sulfur dioxide. So we're just going to start with sulfur dioxide. Now, when that reacts with water, it combines to make a very weak acid called sulfurous acid. If you're unlucky enough to have sulfur trioxide and it reacts with water, well, then you're going to get sulfuric acid, much worse. Okay. If you have nitrogen dioxide and it reacts with water, you can get nitric acid. You could also get oxides of nitrogen reacting with water, and then that's how you get nitrous acid. All four of these are acid rain. Now, the two most common types of acid rain are from sulfurous acid and nitrous acid because they're not as wicked strong as the other two. What's the problem with acid rain? Okay. Well, first off, acid rain affects stuff that we build out of metal. Iron goes through a single replacement reaction with different types of acids, and you get something that looks like this. In a roundabout way, to keep things as simple as possible, you see how the iron just kicked out the hydrogen? you get rust. So acid rain speeds up the rusting potential of all metals. The main thing that you're going to be talking about in chemistry 30 is that acid rain produces excess hydrogen ions, which also increase the speed of rusting. The other thing that acid rain does as well is it affects things that are made out of stone, specifically things that are made out of limestone. Limestone is calcium carbonate and when that reacts with acid rain you go through a double replacement reaction where the hydrogen and the calcium switch and you get calcium sulfate and carbonic acid. Or, and carbonic acid if you check your data booklet is actually really unstable 
And carbonic acid rapidly changes into carbon dioxide and water. And what that does is it bubbles away the calcium sulfate, which we talked about last week or last lesson, which was chalk. So you get limestone getting pitted and, and, uh, and you have iron and different types of copper metals getting rusted. Now, Canada doesn't have anything that's very old that's been built, but other countries do. They have statues and they have other things made out of, of uh, rock that are getting corroded from acid rain. Think like the, the Egyptian stuff in Egypt. Okay. Acid rain also affects plant life. Now, I'm not going to get too technical with this, but what acid rain does is it removes things like calcium and potassium and uh, like sodium from the soil. These all are required for plant growth. It also can destroy, so these are removed, and then you have plant growth stunted. Okay, the acid ring itself can also destroy the mesosphere. Remember that from Science 10, the spongy mesophyll? That's uh, like, like right through here. This is the spongy mesophyll. So that's where gas exchange occurs and some chlorophyll is, is found there. So when subjected to two different types of rain, you can see the, the one on the left is the acid rain affected tree. Acid rain also can affect things in water, like fishies. And what happens is if you have acid rain producing hydrogens in the water, I'm not going to go through the technical chemistry, but you have to know that in rocks, there are stored metals. There are metals that are attached to things. And metal ions are removed by acid rain. And those metal ions really affect certain types of fish and the uptake of their oxygen. The other thing is if you add enough acid rain to a body of water, you drop its pH below where the animals can survive. Now, frogs are just badass. They can just look at the frogs. They don't care. They can live in super acidic stuff. But once we go past here, this is where you get into areas where animals can't survive anymore. So the perch do okay. The bass die, trouts croak pretty quick, the clams are already dead, the crayfish, snails, and mayfly, they all start to disappear. And the problem is when you lose your crayfish, snails, mayfly, and clams, these are your like uh, this these 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 are like your garbage collectors of a body of water. And that exacerbates problems too, because when you don't have those bottom feeders removing dead material, it builds up in bacteria break it down. And then you start to get a drop in dissolved oxygen. So not only can the animals not live there because of the pH, there's an unintended consequence of those animals that used to break down organic material being gone, bacteria taking that over and using up a lot of oxygen and killing things further. Okay. When you have an explosion of plant... Uh, we're not going to talk about that. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to leave you with how can you, how can you effectively stop acid rain? Well, you have to stop it by neutralizing it. And any base will do. <coughs> Excuse me. So the two bases I'm going to show you are calcium oxide and calcium hydroxide. You could have any metal here. It doesn't have to be calcium, but it's got to be something that's 2 plus. So strontium or barium or magnesium or beryllium. Anyways, you go through a double replacement. So the sulfuric acid is turned into calcium sulfate and water. So it's a neutralization reaction. The metal and the hydrogen switch, and we get um, something that's not as acidic. Same thing here. You have This is a really strong base. I wouldn't recommend using a hydroxide, but it kind of works the same way. 
So we get calcium sulfate again, and we get, I believe, uh, two waters, H2O. Yeah, so we get two waters there. Yeah, okay. That's how you control it. Now you could control it with any other base because if you have any kind of acid and you add any kind of base to it, then you help neutralize the acid rain. It is way easier to stop the source of oxides before they get to acid rain. It is way easier to stop it here than